Corporate finance practice problem in OneNote. We're going to do the present value calculation, PV calculation. We will do so multiple different ways, including a mathematical formula, looking at the function of the formula within an Excel type of calculation, as well as using tables. Get ready. It's time to achieve corporate financial fineness with corporate finance. Here we are in our practice problem in OneNote. If you would like to follow along, you're not required to, but if you have access to one to OneNote and would like to, we're going to be, I'm going to open up this tab on the left-hand side in the practice problems section. We're down here on the 912 present value PV calculation multiple ways. I'm then going to close this item up and we'll go through our practice problem. We have the data up top. We're going to use that data to do our calculation, calculating in multiple different ways, including... We have the actual math calculation that we will be doing. Then we have the Excel tables, which is similar to, or use of Excel formulas, which is similar to a financial calculator. Then we will use tables. The mathematical formula is useful to know, so you understand the math. It's also something that possibly will be there in book problems. The calculation in Excel, or a financial calculator, probably more common uh, in practice, probably a good tool to have and to know in practice. And then the tables, also a good tool to have and know because it could be a simplified way to do the math and it's often used in uh, practice problems as well for schools because again you can eliminate the financial calculator by doing that okay so we have the receive we have the uh, receive in the future so we have the future value is going to be the 10,000 we're going to get 10,000 in the future you can think about a situation where like you know we're going to get a payment that's going to happen at some time in the future or possibly we owe something at some point in time in the future. The, that point in time in the future is going to be 12 years. As we think of the periods in the future, you got to make sure that you understand the periods as either being years or months or whatever the period is going to be that you're going to be calculating in. And then the discount rate, which is something that we would have to figure and we take into consideration things like inflation and, and other type of factors that could be uh, involved for the discount rate. Once we have that, then we can do our present value calculation. We'll start it off with a formula present value equaling the future value, which is that 10,000 uh, times 1 over 1 plus R, the rate R being 5% here, to the N number of periods, in our case years, that being 12. We're going to break this formula down into kind of like a vertical type of calculation. Really good practice to do so because you could put that vertical calculation in something like an Excel uh, file and have a good worksheet with it. I think it's easier for a lot of people to actually break down that way. So you can do it algebraically here, plug this information into the formula, or break a formula like this up into some kind of table, which I think is useful to do. So let's see what that will look like. We've got the future value is going to be the 10,000. So that's going to be this point, the 10,000, 10,000 here. Then we're going to be calculating this part of the formula, which is going to be 1 plus R to the N periods. So I'm going to do that calculation here. Uh, and we're going to have the 1, so this is going to be the 1, and then we're going to say the rate is going to be the 5%, so the 1 plus the 5%, that of course is going to give us the 105%, 105%, then we have the number of periods, so we're going to take this then to n periods, that n periods being 12 now, and that's going to give us then this uh, 1.79586. Now, if you do this in a calculator, you kind of need a scientific calculator, one that you could take to the power of something other than uh, squared. So I'm going to pick the scientific calculator here, and I'm going to take then the 1, let's say the 1 plus the 0 0.05. That's going to be 105% to the power of 12. And that's why you got to use this scientific calculator to get to the, the, to the power of, which is the little carrot up top, 12. And that's going to give us the 1.79586. Notice that these problems all typically are going to have some kind of rounding involved. If you use the tables, the tables might come up with a slightly different answer than something like Excel, because Excel will not actually round it. Excel will use the actual number, which is this number, if you put it into the system with a formula. This is another way that a test question can also kind of um, force you to use whatever method they use by using this rounding method. Which will, which will result in one method being slightly different than another method. In practice, obviously, the, the difference is probably immaterial and doesn't really matter. So then we have the present value is going to be that uh, 5568. Uh, so in other words, if I was to take this amount here, let's do our division problem. We got the 10,000 divided by, and then we're going to be picking up this divided by 1.79586. Now note that's rounded now, and that's going to give us the 5568. 
and we have the 37. The 37 is slightly different. It would round to 36 because I cut off some of those decimals as we did the rounding. If we wanted to figure out the amount that would be in a table, for example, the tables, how do we calculate the tables that we'll use later? You could take this amount and say, let's divide that by the 10,000, and that's going to give us our rate, 0.55684, about, once again, there's rounding involved. That's what's going to be basically on the table that we'll take a look at, although, again, the decimal and rounding may differ slightly. So now let's do this with the Excel type of calculation. So if we have this similar information and we use the Excel format, first using the formula table up top, we would say, okay, I'm going to take the rate, which we would find in whatever cell it would be in, and that would be uh, the rate of the 5%. Remember that we're using actual years, so I do not need to break that rate down to a monthly rate, but if we were using months, we would. We'd have to tie in the rate to the periods that we're using and we would do that if it were months by dividing by 12 here. The number of periods is then going to be the 12. Again, that being in years, the payment is zero because we're not using an annuity. Therefore, we're going to use the present value calculation. And this item, which is not bolded, is the future value. Future value of one being the 10,000. That gives us our, uh, our 5568 here, our 556837 that we had up top. So that's how we would do it in basically an Excel type of calculation. Now let's use the present value tables, which are going to be down below. In that method, we would simply take the 10,000 and we would multiply it by the proper amount according to the table, making sure that we're picking up the proper a table. Typically, there being four if you're working in a practice problem, present value, two of them, future value, two of them, one for the present value of one, one for the present value of an annuity. This is not an annuity. We just have one amount. Therefore, present value of one, if that's the case, these amounts should be less than one, right? Because it's got to be something smaller than the amount that you're picking up because it's going to be discounted back to the present value. So we're then going to say that we have the uh, 10,000, 12 years, 5%. So 12 years is way down here. 5% is right there. So we're going to say that's going to be 12 years at the 5%, 0 0.5568. So there's the 0 0.5568, 10,000 times the 0 0.5568 is going to give us that 5568. Once again, be careful down here if you're using these tables for something other than a year that you're picking up the proper rate that lines up to the proper periods. Meaning, you know, if you're, you know, you got to make the, the rates and the periods have to line up here. So if you're using something other than years, make sure you're lining those up properly. That, that rate here, that 0 0.5568, is similar to what we calculated up top, 0.55684. Notice they rounded the rate down to four digits on the table. And so um, that's, that's going to give you a slightly different number, possibly. And that could be useful, again, for test preparers or test questions who want to force you to use the table and not want you to use a financial calculator or some other method for whatever reason. So now we're going to change it up. Let's say we receive a future value 20,000, three years in the future, discount 7%. Let's do this with the formula again. So we got this formula. We're going to break out into a table type of format. Future value now 20,000. Then we have the 1 plus R to the N, which is going to be 1 plus the rate 7%. That, of course, gives us 107%. We then have the number of periods that it's going to be going to. That's going to be this 2N, which will be 3. If I plug that into the trusty calculator, we would just simply say we have 1 plus 0.07. That's going to give us the 1.07. We're going to then take that to the power of 3. Take it to the power of 3. And that's going to give us then uh, this amount down here about, because we got rounding is going to be involved. Then if we take the 20,000, 20,000 divided by the 1.22504, that's going to give us our 16. Uh, 325.96, about, again, it's rounded because we had rounding that's going to be involved here. This is actually using uh, the more exact number because we're in Excel. If I take that amount and I divide it by, divide by the 20,000, that's going to give us the 0.81629. This is the amount that might be on the table, although, again, rounding will be involved, and the table will cut it down to, I believe, four digits uh, and, and therefore, it's going to be a little less precise, but typically good enough for decision-making purposes. So then we have the same information with an Excel-type formula. Notice you can also do the Excel-type formula with this, this little key down below, which is the same thing as the box we used up top, which would be the rate. So B3 would be the rate, and that would be the 7% the, uh, 
the number of periods number of periods is going to be three once again make sure that you understand the number of periods as being whatever they should be years or months typically and then we have the uh, the payments we're not making payments because this is not an annuity we're just using one so therefore that amount is going to be zero or you can just have two commas and then we're going to be picking up the last amount which is going to be the future value that being the 20,000 that formula then will provide us with the same result uh, about because the rounding could be involved and then we if we take a look at the same thing using the tables we're going to be taking that 20,000 times the amount on the table we're going to pick the three periods three years at seven percent so three years seven percent the 0.8163 so there's the 0.8163. If we multiply that out, we get the 16,326. That's about the same uh, as this number. A little different, though, because of rounding. You saw the tables only went out four digits. When we calculate the table this way, what the, should be on the table, this is what we calculated it to be. It's what was on the table, but it was rounded to basically four digits, 0.8162, and they rounded it to 0.8163 here from the table. Let's do it again. We got the received future value of the 30,000 years, nine years, discount 12%. Let's do it with a formula. We're going to say, all right, that means 30,000 is the future value. Now we're going to do the 1 plus R to the N. 1 plus R, 12% to, that's 112% to 9 being the number of periods. Putting that in the trustee calculator, we get 1 plus 0.12 gives us 112%. And then we're going to take that to 9, and that's going to give us our 2, uh, our 2.773, and then they round it. It's rounded here, so it's rounded here. It's more specific in the calculator. I'm going to then uh, remove this. I'm going to say the 30,000 divided by the 2.77308 is going to give us that 10,818, about 30. And then if I take that amount and I divide it by the 30,000, that's going to give us the amount that we expect to be on the table, but rounded to four digits, that being the 3606. So let's go ahead and check that out. So that means the 30,000, if we discounted it at the 12% for the number of years, nine years, that would give us what we would think of the current value of the 10,818.30. If we do that same calculation for Excel, we would say, okay, the rate here is going to be the 12%. And then the number of periods, remembering that we have them in years here. So if they were months, we'd have to make sure to, to put them in the proper period. That's going to be the nine uh, periods. The payment is going to be zero. So this time we'd represented that with just two, two commas instead of putting a zero, which is fine as well. Either way works. And then we have the future value, which is going to be B1. That would be the 30,000. That then would give us the same result. Going then down to the tables, uh, we have the same thing on the tables. So now we're going to take the table amount. We need the 12% at 9 years, 12% and the 9 years, the 0.363. So 0.363 times the 30,000 gives us that 10,818. And that 10,818 is about the same as this 10,818.3 different by 0.3 of course because as we could see the rates are slightly different the table rounding to four digits so we have calculated what we thought should be on the table 0.3631 and it has 0 0.3606 hold on a sec 0 0.6 0 0.3606 0 0.36061 got things backwards there i do that uh less so than used to but still do it in any case, there we have it, uh, multiple different methods.